Okay, today I'm going to replace the uh, bilge pump on my Ranger 395V inboard outboard boat. It's a boat that I purchased recently on Facebook Marketplace and I'm, I'm doing uh, quite a bit of work to it. I had to pull the engine out, so it's a good time to uh, access the bilge pump, live oil pumps. So I'm going to change the, uh, the bilge pump. It had the original bilge pump was just a manual type that you would flip with a toggle switch. And on my other boat, I recently installed this auto bilge pump and it worked fantastic on my other boat. It does have two power wires that, that, run, that run the pump. Um, so you can run it with a manual switch to run it manually. And it also has a float in there. So if your boat starts taking on some water, um, that float will come up and that wire is run to a straight uh, hot wire. So that way it'll just automatically start pumping that water out of your boat. And so that's a great feature. I really enjoyed it on my other boat. So I'm gonna get started installing it on this boat. Uh, I will also put uh, in the description uh, a link to the product. So if you're interested in purchasing, purchasing this for your uh, boat, you can see where I got it in the link. Okay, so here's the pump. Like I said, it's got one ground wire one wire goes to the manual feature and the other one goes to the uh, to the auto feature and it has a uh, instructions here if you're going to use the uh, 12 volt like i am then you're going to want to use a 6 amp fuse if you're going to use a 24 volt then it calls for the 3 amp fuse okay and on this auto bilge pump the black wire goes to ground the brown wire with the white stripe goes to uh, battery positive this is for the auto feature um, so the built built pump will automatically come on when the float level is raised it also has a little knob on here where you can twist it to test it to make sure it's working and then the brown will go to your switch on your dash if you have the manual bilge pump feature so now we'll work on getting it installed first thing i'm gonna do is take my hose over here and get it routed correctly well, first I'm going to see if I can get it to fit in there and it is not wanting to fit. I'm going to see if I can heat that hose up a little bit and uh, get some stretch into it where I can get it to fit my pump. That's better. A little bit of heat on that old hose made it flexible so I could get it installed. Get our bilge pump in there and then we'll just let that hose cool down and then we'll tighten the clamp up on it here in a minute. Now you want to put your bilge pump on the low portion of the floor. Just try to find a good spot where this bilge pump wants to live here in the bottom of the boat. There. That looks good. Now, to mount these bilge pumps, 
on the bottom of this cover, it does have some screw holes, but per Ranger, you never want to put um, screws on this model of boat right here into the bottom of the hole, hole. So what I do is I take some zip ties and just kind of zip tie it to hold it into location. That way you don't have to try to put any screws in the bottom of your boat. Another trick you can do with zip ties when they're not quite long enough, you can put two together and uh, just like so, put it through here until you hear it start to click. And then you've got twice the length to work with. And now we want to clip off the extra length of our zip ties just to clean it up a little bit. All right, now that we've got that secured, we'll work on wiring it up. And our black goes to the ground. And we've got an available ground wire here that we were using on our other bilge pump. Need to come in length off that wire and use the uh, strippers to strip off the insulation. It seems like when they uh, give you that little bit, they just never quite enough. Just they just give you a little bit, and to get that connector in there, you just need a a little a little more than that. So I like to pull it and give just a little bit more. And now we can use one of our our butt connectors there. And you want to stick it in there, make sure you've got plenty of wire into that connector. I like to give it a little, little twist in motion, make sure that it's in there. And then give it a good crimp. And I like these. These are excellent wire crimpers. So we'll use that. Give it a nice solid crimp. And then whenever you do that, you always want to grab it and give it a real nice tug to make sure that it's that it's secured in there. I've seen a lot of people put these things on, they don't get them quite snug, and it'll stay there for a while, and then it'll, it'll wiggle out later and cause you all kinds of frustrations trying to figure out where your problem's at. So make sure that you give it that little tug after you get it crimped down. Now we'll do the other side. Give 
again. Give it a good solid two-handed crimp. Pull it on each side. And these are heat shrink connectors, which means you can put a little heat on them and shrink them down to fit the wire. And that that makes them weatherproof to prevent corrosion so it'll it'll help it run for a long time and now we've got our, our brown wire it just goes to our bilge pump wire So, looks like it's going to be this wire, and it's had a little bit of work there done previously, some heat shrink on there. So we are going to just cut into it, let's see, make sure we're on the right wire, there. And again, the same procedure. Like they said, they, that new wire, they give you just a, a little bit of exposed wire, not quite enough, so we wanna strip that off so we get a little more. So we get a good solid crimp. And I like to give the wires a little, a little twist, like that. Helps any frayed wires that are that are hanging out from shooting outside that connector and then again just give it a good good solid crimp with two hands if possible on each side all right and Give it a good tug, it's in there nice and solid. And grab our heat gun. Get that shrunk down. Get another good connection that prevents that corrosion. And it also helps hold the wires together. And I like these heat guns. Some guys just use a wire uh, lighter to, to melt those. I don't smoke, so I don't usually have lighters readily available. Um, I like my heat gun, and it's got more control. You just think about it. When you put your heat gun down, usually the tip's going to be hot, so you don't want to set it down on your carpet. Uh, when you're working, it, it'll just melt that carpet. So you want to set it down on something that's, where it's not going to melt and think about where you put it. And then also, when you're heating up these wires, you want to make sure that you're not, uh, you hold them out separately if you're if you're heating them up and you've, you've got a bundle of wires you might end up melting some stuff that you don't want to so just always be aware when you're using that where you're directing that heat to so we got the positive and negative wired up and then so now we've got this wire that needs to go to a, a battery positive direct wire and uh, it needs to be on a six amp fuse so we might have to get a little extra wire in here now i've got to run a little length of wire because it hooks up to this this connector right over here so i'm gonna trim the insulation off this wire so i can run some some new wire get up there stay there all right Trim some back. And we've got this little connector right here. I'm not sure. Let me look at that. Let's let's see if that'll fit in there. Because we've got the auto bilge pump 
needs to run up and fit right here on this connector. So let me see what will fit in there. Looks like I need to put in it. You just need to put in that kind of a connector. Good, I'm glad I checked that. So, put our connector on there, give it a good. Nice two-handed crimp. Gonna give it the tug test. Nice and tight. And now we're gonna run a length of wire over here. Kind of try to string it along with this other group of wires. And put it right in here. If that screwdriver was a little big, we'll put one in there that fits you a little better. Oh, that's better. Okay. And so let's find our, our wire. When we get it all done, we're going to zip tie stuff back up to where it's supposed to be, up in this position. Now I'm going to see how long that wire needs to be in length. Looks like this will just about do it. We'll go ahead. Cut it and then we'll strip that insulation off again. Use our connectors. Give it a good crimp. Oh, had a misfire there. Didn't get it shoved in quite far enough. Happens sometimes. So we just got to start over. And that wire didn't get all the way down in there before I crimped it. So I like to give it that, that twist. Sometimes you get that wire that will straggle out there and it'll hold you from, from getting down all the way in that connector. There we go. Nice, secure connection. We're gonna give it that wire a little twist, twist. Shove it in our connector. Okay. Then Another secure crimp. I'm gonna give it that tug test. And I felt like it might be wiggling a little bit. Let's give that another crimp. All right. Now, feels nice and tight. So we'll take our heat gun. Pay attention not to melt anything else we don't want to while we're doing this. All right. Looks good. So we've got it zip tied into the location. We got it all wired up. Now on this boat, it had a wire for the auto bilge pump, even though it previously didn't have it the last guy that changed the pump out must have taken advantage of that feature but it's got uh, switches for the bilge pump and the auto bilge pump and uh, so I was able to connect it in on my other boat it had a bilge pump switch but not an auto bilge pump switch so I just ran 
the wire straight to the battery and then I put an inline fuse connector for a six amp fuse. So if your boat doesn't have the separate switch for the auto bilge, uh, you can just do that. Put an inline fuse connector with a six amp fuse and wire it up. But um, like I said, this worked great on my other boat. I uh, really love that auto feature. So if you start getting a little water in on your boat, it'll just start pumping it out automatically. You don't have to think about it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like. And then uh, stay tuned. I've got more videos coming.